please welcome our superhero sponsor, Resco.net Inc. and the amazing Ivan Stano, COO by day, superhero by night. Today, Ivan will be saving the day by presenting how to build a mobile Swiss knife. Stick around after Ivan's session for a live Q&A with a real life superhero. Hello everyone and welcome to the next session at the Dynamics Con conference. I'm really excited to be here uh, with you again after the last year's edition. Uh, super, super excited to be part of the Dynamics Con 2021. My name is Ivan Stano. I'm the evangelist at Resco.net and my session today is going to be all about building the mobile Swiss knife. So like the ultimate mobile tool for people who spend a lot of time uh, in the field. As uh, we're the sponsors uh, of DynamicsCon 2021, we also have a booth uh, in the virtual expo. So if you have uh, questions, feel free to stop by there virtually, of course, uh, or just to say hi, we'll be more than happy to, uh, to chat with you there. Also, if you'll have questions about the content that I'm gonna present today, uh, there's a QA and a uh, part reserved towards the end of the uh, end of the sessions, uh, so you can you can type your questions uh, uh, into the chat. Uh, that will be perfect, and I'll take uh, care of them hopefully uh, at the end of the session. So, what to expect today from this session? Uh, I'm gonna cover a little bit about the typical struggles of uh, field operations people, so people who spend a lot of time uh, out of the office, uh, have to visit a lot of customers, clients, uh, and sites, and provide a lot of services to make sure that the customer sites, machinery, and their assets are working in a great condition. Uh, so we'll cover some of those challenges, but then I like to make it interactive, so I prepared a demo. I would love to show you the mobile application, kind of the ultimate app that we put together. And also, if everything goes well, hopefully I'll be able to show you uh, the application running on a smartwatch too, uh, to kind of demonstrate that the world is moving on. It's not just about the smartphones anymore. So if that sounds good and you're excited just like I am, uh, let's kick it off. First, uh, first things first, uh, so a little bit about Resco, who we are and what we do and why I'm actually talking about mobility. Uh, if you're a Dynamics partner or customer uh, involved in Dynamics field service, you might have heard of Resco uh, through our relationship and partnership with Microsoft. Uh, that's about to turn uh, three years this summer. Uh, as a company uh, and provider of mobility and mobile technologies, we're partnering with Microsoft to support their field service mobile client. And uh, there's a lot of customers using this Resco-based uh, technology all around the world. So chances are you have heard about Resco uh, through the relationship that we have with Microsoft. Uh, if some of you have heard of uh, the news and Microsoft uh, working and preparing a new uh, application that is actually already available and have any questions about that, uh, please let me know as well. Uh, we're getting a lot of uh, customers uh, uh, customers' questions, what they should do and what are what the options are. But also if you're a partner and in, uh, you're interested what, uh, what to tell your customers, uh, what's the best path forward, uh, we'll be more than happy to work with you to uh, uh, to find some of the best options. But we're much more than just a field service technology provider for Microsoft. We're actually a company that's been around for over 20 years. And since the very beginning of the company, we focus on mobility, mobile applications, mobile developer tools, mobile platform, or building different kinds of mobile business applications. And when people ask me like, okay, so what do you really do? It's really tough to pick and pinpoint one particular thing that we do uh, or do well, because there are so many different use cases and utilizations of our technology. But for the reasons to probably demonstrate how powerful our, our solutions are, I picked two particular customers, uh, organizations that we work with. The pictures that you can hopefully see on your, on your screen right now uh, are the actual users of Resco. Uh, the one on the left-hand side, that's a picture from Cameroon. We're working with a global uh, uh, agency 
working with refugees, the UNHCR, United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees, who picked RESCO as their mobile platform of choice uh, to create a mobile application for refugee identification and registration purposes. They use it in more than 40 countries around the world. And the picture here is from Cameroon, from a refugee camp, as you can see, pretty much in the middle of nowhere, um, no electricity, no internet connectivity, and they use RESCO uh, to really speed up the whole registration uh, process and make sure that people who are very, very frequently in a very harsh conditions and tough situations with a lot of kids and sometimes even small babies, as you can see on the picture here, uh, can get through that whole process, sometimes painful, much more faster and much more smoother. Uh, this is a great success and the UN is really utilizing Microsoft Dynamics and the power of, uh, of RESCO uh, to make uh, this whole process much better. The other one, uh, it's a different story, but uh, uh, I think quite interesting as well. Uh, this is a company that operates in adventurous tourism business. They bring their customers, the tourists, to some of the, the most remote areas in the world. The picture here is uh, from the uh, from the North Pole area where they bring the tourists on their special ships that can withstand, withstand some of the harshest conditions as well and get through the ice. But they also organize a lot of trips to Antarctica where, where they bring people. And because they operate in really remote areas, uh, they, they were looking for a technology that could help them to do all of their field processes uh, and uh, activities much better and much smoother. So hopefully that gives you an idea who we are and who we work with. In general, we really work with organizations with people in the field. So organizations, companies that have people working out of the office and looking for ways how to make their lives easier, make them more productive, make them uh, more knowledgeable and make sure that they can operate faster and better. So I'll help myself a little bit with a story of Bill. Uh, and uh, in my demo, I'll pretend that I'm Bill. But this is something that we encounter pretty frequently and kind of encapsulates uh, the typical challenges that the customers and organizations we work with face on a daily basis. Uh, this is Bill. Bill is a field service technician, a junior field technician. Actually, he's 25 and he's really excited because just recently uh, he joined the company that he works for. Uh, there is a, actually a big lack of people uh, working in professional and uh, field services across the globe, but it's, uh, it's very prevalent in North, North America as well. So uh, Bill is really happy to, to, to have the opportunity to join uh, this company, but he understands that there's a lot that he needs to learn about all the processes uh, and all of his work. On any given day, he really loves his job because it's pretty creative. Um, he uh, He's not really bored at all. He goes uh, on a daily basis uh, to all the different kind of customers. He drives around. Uh, he's uh, really the hero of the day, helping the customers uh, uh, to uh, to make sure that they operate smoothly uh, and that they, uh, they can stay in their business. But sometimes he runs into problems. Because he's new uh, and he doesn't know uh, everything about uh, about every little piece of, uh, of the machinery and every asset and every situation, he sometimes reaches his limitations. Sometimes the work is too complex. He has to go through too many steps uh, and he loses traction. Sometimes he's maybe not familiar what needs to be done. And that often results in issues. Uh, the customers are some uh, are not happy because uh, they have to because Bill has to come there uh, one more time. If he's not able to fix it, a more senior person from his team needs to come in, and that uh, creates uh, some delays. But also, uh, if Bill's not successful, his manager is not super happy, and then uh, the problem just escalates. Sometimes Bill also panics when there's an emergency and something needs to be fixed really, really fast to avoid bigger problems and bigger issues. And that's the situation where he panics. 
We at Resco believe that with the choice of the right tool, we can make these seemingly big problems become much, much smaller and help Bill really succeed even in the toughest uh, conditions and most complex problems. The way we approach it is uh, we believe that if we equip Bill with the right tool and not just his wrench, but the digital tool, we can help him even with the most complex issues. It's based on core principles. Uh, and the first one uh, is very obvious, and that's to provide them him with the correct data uh, from, from this, his back office uh, or backend system. And then I uh, help him identify the equipment so he always knows what kind of machine, what kind of asset he's working on. Equip him with the right guides and manuals for every given situation so that he doesn't have to carry the whole trailer uh, of PDFs and paper-based uh, manuals. So all of these should be handy in his pocket as part of his device of choice. Also make sure that we can put all the instructions in a logical order so that he can follow, follow these even if they consist of 150 or more steps. And when he's really in big problems, and faces big issues that he really has no idea how to how to solve or how to move forward, we believe that he should have an option to contact the experts uh, via his, uh, uh, his phone uh, based on the AR functionality so that people can see what he sees and give him visual clues on the go. So based on those principles, I present the Resco Smart Worker. That's really our aspiration to make sure that companies have the smartest workers possible. Uh, and we believe that we can achieve it by combining the best software, hardware, and knowledge together so that we can create one experience uh, that helps to elevate their game. So let's now look really briefly at the different types of, of, uh, of the smart of the successful smart worker, starting with the technology. When it comes to technology, uh, Resco Smart Worker um, is based on, on two main pillars. The first one, of course, is the one from Resco, and that's our multi-experience platform. This is pretty much everything that we as a company learned uh, about mobility and how other companies approach uh, mobile projects, mobile business applications, and mobile enterprise solutions. As I mentioned in the beginning, uh, we've been doing this for over 20 years. And within that time, we've seen tremendous changes and evolvement of mobile technologies, whether it's new devices, uh, whether it's completely new hardware that is making the way into, into our lives that I'll talk uh, about just a little bit uh, later, uh, but also brand new approaches and how actually people uh, consume the mobile applications. But we also understand that it creates a lot of pressure if you want to manage your mobile applications. The mobile devices evolve. We have new operating systems, new versions of the backend systems as well. So every mobile, pro mobile project, mobile application is actually a journey. And we're helping other companies and our customers to make this journey a successful, successful path. So with the multi-experience platform from Resco, uh, we're making sure that we can cover you on all the different types of devices, but also cover a lot of processes and be able to create those unique experiences for your smart workers. But our platform wouldn't be successful without partnering uh, with some other successful uh, software solutions. And that's why we work so closely with Microsoft. Obviously and natively, we support Microsoft Dynamics 365. We work with all the different kind of versions of Dynamics 365, including customer engagement, field service, naturally. Uh, that's uh, where Microsoft uh, chose Resco uh, to provide that uh, that functionality for, for mobile uh, application. So we really natively and seamlessly integrate with Microsoft Dynamics 365 so that we help customers and organizations to squeeze the maximum potential of Microsoft Dynamics 365. And a brand new thing uh, that we'll be announcing very soon, 
Uh, we are providing now support for Microsoft Dynamics 365 Business Central. So all customers who use Business Central, uh, previously known as uh, NAV, which stands for Navision, can benefit from uh, the RESCO platform when in need of robust mobile applications. And for those of you looking into the future uh, and building your, uh, your business applications on top of Microsoft Dataverse, RESCO uh, can be integrated with Dataverse as well so that we can bring the same rich experience for companies who are looking to build, uh, build on top of Dataverse uh, as well. So that's technology. Let's look at uh, the second part, and that's hardware. And this is something that I believe uh, uh, really sets Resco uh, apart from all the other solutions that you can find on the market. And that's the landscape of all the supported uh, hardware uh, uh, that we cover with Resco, uh, with Resco technology. Obviously, when we started with the uh, with building the first types of Resco applications the hardware world looked completely different. Maybe some of you, uh, those who can admit that they still remember, uh, uh, but the devices such as Palm Pilots, Pocket PCs, first version of Windows Mobile, if some of those ring a bell, that was kind of the start of, uh, of Resco. Those were the devices that we supported when we started the company. Obviously, the world uh, has moved on, and now we support the new devices that, of course, include the iPhones, the iPads, the Android smartphones and tablets, but also Windows tablets and laptops. But that's kind of the necessity and bare minimum. We're moving on as the world is moving on as well. And we now support the smartwatches uh, uh, that are making their way into the enterprise life. Uh, out of the box, we support Apple Watch, Android Watch, and... Uh, this is a really interesting uh, and exciting time for us at Resco. Just the uh, end of last year, we uh, announced our own enterprise-grade watch called Resco Nivi. Uh, we are actually shipping the first, the first test versions to interested customers and partners all around the all around the world. And we're moving on. We're creating these unique partnerships with other hardware providers. We're really proud and really excited about partnering with Realware, uh, the company who's behind the head mounted, dev uh, mounted devices uh, that really help uh, the workers who need to utilize both of their hands and operate in, in, in areas where they have to really move around and yet have a constant access uh, to their data uh, and, and uh, being connected that way. But we also uh, uh, partner with some of the well-known brands uh, uh, who has been established um, and their business has been growing uh, for, for decades and decades. Zebra, for example, and they ruggedize devices. So we're really making sure that uh, we're providing the, the rich mobile experiences for, comp for companies who are in uh, the supply chain operations, warehousing, manufacturing, where these unique devices are being deployed or Epson smart glasses, maybe just as an example of the type of the device that we support. And we're, when you look at some of the more exciting stuff, like uh, the AR, VR headsets, we also cover those. So Microsoft HoloLens and HoloLens 2 or Oculus Rift S, that's some of the types and examples of devices that are supported with, Re with Resco technology as well. So hopefully that kind of demonstrates the, the scope and uh, the whole landscape of different types of hardware that Resco technology runs on. And the beauty is that it's all done through the one same technology with the same set of tools and designers and functional blocks that can be combined to provide and create the, the final version of the application without becoming a specialized uh, developer for Apple Watch versus Realware versus Microsoft HoloLens versus Android smartphones. It's all done once and then deployed across uh, this spectrum of different devices. The last part uh, and the last element of uh, the successful uh, smart worker uh, is the knowledge. And we are big believers into, in creating one application that includes all the important pieces that the user needs. 
Uh, I remember myself maybe seven, eight years ago uh, when uh, uh, we were working very closely with Gartner and they were telling us that companies really want these simple applications that uh, they can they can use five, seven, maybe each application for different purpose. We're actually seeing a little different trend here. Um, most of our customers love one application where they can spend their whole day in working on all the different uh, parts of their, their agenda and cover their whole job. So obviously the big part of it, Part of the application is to bring uh, the backend functionality, the backend data, whether those are coming in a form of entities or views and forms, uh, etc., in the application, so that they have everything that they need. And then, of course, equipped with some knowledge sharing and different forms of knowledge sharing, whether that's inspections, instructions, step-by-step -step guides, maybe videos or guidelines and guides in form of PDF documents. And of course, the same application that they can use to call their friends, their colleagues when they're in big problems. And then of course, the application provides the option to capture, store and share that field knowledge across the whole team and across the whole company. So that's it for the theoretical part. And now let's turn the gears a little bit and I'll show you how we foresee that application working on a real device. Because this is a virtual demo uh, I, or virtual session, uh, I will use my obvious devices that will help me to demonstrate those capabilities. And that will be a smartphone and then a smartwatch as well. So let's look at that right now. And uh, let's start with the smartphone first. So here on the screen, you can see my iPhone, but the application works perfectly fine all, on all, uh, all of the other devices and looks very similar as well. At the very uh, first screen here, I have my home menu, which gives me access to all the key parts from the backend system, which in this case is Microsoft Dynamics 365 field service. So I have everything that I need right here in my pocket as part of the device. If I'm Bill again, uh, usually I start my day by looking at my calendar. So I'll uh, tap on the very first item that says bookings. This brings all the bookings, so everything that I have scheduled for today. As you can see at the bottom of the screen, I can quickly change between different views, such as agenda view, day view, week view, and month view as well. So as I can see, my morning is pretty busy. I have to start at 8.30 a.m. and go to Litware um, Incorporated. And then I have one more uh, booking for uh, the later morning as well. If I need to find out more, what I can do, I can tap on that little screen that opens the details of the booking. At the very top of the screen, I have this scrollable uh, status bar where I can uh, change my booking status. So I always know what kind of stage uh, the or status the work order is. And then underneath I have all the details and additional information so that I always know what I need to do. This sounds good. I think I have a pretty good idea what I need to do. Uh, so what, what can I do what I can do now is uh, change myself to traveling status uh, and actually save this as you, uh, as you can see here my traveling status changed on the calendar as well from scheduled to traveling and i'm ready to get in my van and hit the road because we really want to optimize um, the workers life and work we thought about the traveling part and the driving part as well that's why part of my application is my route and optimization if I click there, it will probably take just a second because my work is in the Seattle, Washington area. Here we go. Uh, but this route functionality gives me a really nice overview and view of where I need to go and how to get there. So I have my office address shown here on the right hand side, the little blue pin that you can see with the two buildings. That's where, where I start and end my day. And then those two bookings, they're shown on the map as well. Number one down here and number two uh, north of Seattle as well. And then the blue blue line shows me how to get from my start location 
to first location and second location, and then, of course, all the way back. If I want to see the details, I can tap at the bottom of the screen. This is the tour plan. Uh, here you can see those two stops. They are exactly as I showed you in the, uh, in the bookings calendar. Uh, and at the bottom of the screen, I also get some totals and statistics. So I know I need to cover almost 70 miles and it's going to take me close to three hours of driving. We also thought about those of you who use your phones uh, or your Apple cars and Android auto when you drive. So if I had hit the real small button in the right upper corner, I can actually open this tour plan in Google Maps and I'm based just outside of Boston, Massachusetts. So for me, this would be a really long trip. Uh, but the point is when I zoom in to the area of Seattle, you will see those three points named AB and then just the blue, uh, black dot and that those are the stops. So it really shows me a step-by-step -step navigation how to get there from my current location. And this should be a pretty familiar experience for most of you who use uh, the navigation. So I did that. Uh, let's say I arrived at the Litware uh, company and I can mark myself as in progress because I'm now ready to start the work. I pretty much know what to do based on this information here. And as part of my job, I have to go through a number of, uh, of tasks. Those I'll actually perform in, in a form of what we call RESCO inspections that, as you can see, can be very nicely embedded within the, uh, the application. When I arrive at the spot, I first need to make sure that I work in a safe environment. So what I'll do, I'll tap on the plus button here and I found the HES scan checklist, as you can see here in the middle of the screen. But because when I'm checking for hazards and scanning for hazards, I usually need to use both of my hands. What I'll actually do, I'll use my smartwatch to do that process a little bit easier for me. So let me just switch the phone for, for the watch and I'll show you how we can run that on a watch. So what I'm going to do is first unlock the watch I'll go into the menu and I look, res look for RESCO mobile CRM application, the blue one right here. I open it up and it tells me, mm, you just do one more thing, open the questionnaire on your mobile device. So I just did that. Now I'll continue by, with answering all these fields. So I confirm the date and the first important question, any hazards? I'll answer yes. And here we go, risk of slip. Let's say low, uh, strain or overexertion, medium, uh, moving objects, medium, energy source, yes, Her uh, sub harmful substances or objects, let's say hi. And the last question, am I done? Yes, I'm done. So the last message is continue on, on your handheld device. So I'll confirm. And just as a confirmation, I'll show you how it looks like on a mobile device. So everything that I was filling out on my wrist using the watch, uh, this is how it looks like on the mobile device. And all the questions are answered here. So if I need to make any additional changes, I can do so here. But when I'm done, I just hit the save button. And now I complete it uh, right here. So now I'm sure I'm working in a safe environment. What I'll do now, I'll run through a really thorough inspection of an elevator. So I'll tap the plus button again, and I'll pick the right template. As you can see, you can have really as many templates here, as many tap, uh, questionnaires as you wish. So for every given job, every given task, you can have one uh, that will help me to make sure I follow the procedure and go through through the whole process really, really thoroughly. If you're wondering about support of other languages, here's a simple example of one in German, uh, but we support all the different languages as well. Uh, so it's really up to you uh, what kind of uh, localization you're looking for. So I'm gonna choose the regular inspection, uh, the second from the bottom, and I open it up. 
This is a different type of questionnaire. It consists of uh, multiple uh, different groups or sections and different kinds of uh, questions as well. As well. As I'm starting this questionnaire uh, on top of a record, uh, you can see that we already predefined a lot of the fields here at the top of the screen. So we assign the inspection to a particular work order, customer, technician, that's Bill, that's myself, and we also uh, capture the current date. I have to start the inspection by first identifying the, the asset. So what kind of machinery, what kind of uh, asset I'm going to be inspecting. And I can do it by typing in the serial number or what I can do is tap on that little button next to it uh, uh, and just scan a QR code or barcode. So I'll do that uh, and I have a big barcode here uh, just so you believe me, it's right here. So I'll just scan it with my phone. So just give me a second. Here we go. And based on that, you can see just in matter of uh, one second, I have that serial number there. If I need to change it or if I need to edit it, I can do that as well. Maybe I can type there some numbers. Uh, just like that, very easy. I can then choose the customer asset. So I have a list of assets that are installed uh, at the customer. Uh, there's a, an elevator Kone. Based on that, we populate the model and also information about the last inspection performed here. I can define the general state and I know it's working, but there are some small issues that have, have been reported by the customer. So let's kick it off now. This is the first section, the first group that I'm gonna be focusing on. It's the cabin interior. So I have to really check the lights, the control panel, the LCD display, the cabin walls, and the speaker and microphone. As you can see, we also support support color coding so we can point the attention uh, to the areas that require some more, uh, some more work. After that, I'll move on to the cabin exterior. Uh, so I check the brakes first, left brake and the right brake. But let's say the right brake um, is damaged. I can see that there's some issue. It's not really working as it should. And I know that I have to replace it because I just can't leave uh, can't leave the customer's uh, building before I, I really fix the break. Uh, and when I go to my spare parts, it's becoming pretty apparent that this is a mess. And uh, Bill ran into a problem quite quickly. There's just so many different spare parts uh, uh, that are part of this, this uh, elevator that I have hard time to identify the right one. So what we'll do, uh, we'll use the AI image recognition that is part of, uh, part of uh, this application. And I'll just take a picture of that spare part and we'll see if, uh, if we can uh, find out what kind of uh, spare part it is. So I have another picture here uh, that I'll take, uh, uh, I'll snap with my phone. And we're just submitting that picture as you can see here. And now when I open the spare part window here, I have only one pointing to a brake pad. So my AI image rec recognition functionality was able to identify that this is a brake pad. This is how it looks like, and I'm able to replace it. So I can mark it as okay, fully fixed, and the spare parts will be locked in as, uh, as part of the work order to make sure that this shows up on the customer's bill. I go on, check the wire ropes and the securing bracket. Afterwards, if there are any big issues that require some attention, I can take a picture of them and even attach little tags on top of the picture. But let's say uh, uh, that uh, I found a really big one. So what I'll do, I'll take a picture of it and let you see that. This is the, the elevator shaft that definitely has some issues, as you can see, missing doors. Uh, a lot of things look like uh, it, it needs a lot of attention and work. So I hit use photo. But now before storing that picture as part of the questionnaire, I can add some visual clues, little visual tags on top of the picture. 
To do so, all I have to do is tap on the little plus button here in the, in the corner and these two cabin issues pop up. All I have to do is just grab it with my finger and place it on a particular location of the picture, just like this. Now, when I tap on that little red tag, I can say this is regarding the control panel. It's a critical priority. And I can even add further description, such as please inspect this ASAP. Done. And maybe I'll add one more tag. So I'll grab this red pin. I place it on the other side. I tap on it and I can define this to wire ropes and it's a high priority. And just like that, I'm done. When I identified all the issues by taking the picture and attaching the pin, I click on the check mark button in the right upper corner and that picture is stored there. Just like that, I'll also go through the engine room. That should be pretty clear. Uh, I check every floor. In ideal world, I will really, I would really go through all of them. And then I have some final notes that I can attach and also uh, scribble my signature to confirm I went through this whole inspection and that signature is right here. If I would run into bigger issues, uh, and would need to contact my colleagues in the back office. I can do so right from the application right here. Uh, for us, we call it Resco Houston, and you can see it right down here. So if I choose Resco Houston, uh, I can choose a colleague I want to call. So let's say my colleague Denise can help me. And that would initiate a phone call through which I can share my screen and Denise would be able to give me visual clues uh, and help me through the process. When I'm done, I'll just store that phone call and add the subject, quick call, and save that. This time I didn't need it, but what I'll do, I'll do one last thing and that's I'll create a mobile report so that before I leave the customer, I can, I can uh, leave a, a PDF report uh, with them. So let's see uh, how this looks like. Here we go. That was built pretty quickly. And this is the PDF with all the pictures, all the answers. We have the red text here as well. And at the bottom, we should see the signature. So when I'm done here, uh, what I can do, I can copy it. If I have access to printer, I can print it out or just email it to the customer so that before I leave uh, their building, they have a copy on record. So just like that, I was able to go through a number of things at, the, at this customer. I was able to inspect the elevator. I was able to uh, replace a faulty uh, brake pad, uh, documented everything. And before I left, I was able to leave uh, a copy of the report um, for the customer. Now I just need to change my status to complete it. And just like that, I can save the work order. And as you can see, I see green light up here. When it's green, that makes me happy. I know this is done and I can move on, get in my uh, car and drive to the wingtip toys integration to see how, what I can do uh, there. One last thing before I wrap up the demo. Resco applications, as showcased through some of the some of the customers I was talking in the beginning, uh, is really based on a bulletproof offline capability. That means it not only works in the toughest situations, like really remote areas, but also in very dense areas, such as uh, the streets of New York or where you have to go maybe two, three floors underground. But it also allows the user to experience a really nice user, uh, user experience. The application is not lagging. Everything works fast. I tap on the, uh, on the button or on the screen somewhere and everything loads very quickly. But if I want to change to online mode, I can do that very easily. This uh, little button in the left upper corner, I can tap on that. Uh, the scratch sign goes away and now if I go into the accounts, we're actually pulling them online in real time. 
So I can work with the application in real online mode. But if I lose connectivity, I can quickly switch to offline mode really in a, in a matter of maybe one tenth of a second and continue working with the application in offline mode, create new records, record everything that I'm doing as part of my job without any limitations. So that concludes my demo. Uh, hope I gave you some ideas how a, a really mobile uh, Swiss knife type of application can look like. If you'll have more, more questions, please type them in. Um, we're going to look at them right now. If you have more questions later, don't forget we have a booth in the virtual expo. But also, here's my email address. If you have something uh, to share later on, I'll be more than happy to, uh, to, uh, to uh, hear from you uh, and understand what you're going through and some of your challenges that we could help with. Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining the session of uh, RESCO. Uh, and thanks for your interest in how to create a, a mobile Swiss knife type of application. Uh, we are ready to answer any of your questions. Uh, I'm here with my colleague, Paulina. Hi, Paulina. Hello, everyone. Thanks for having me. And we have a couple of really interesting ones. Uh, one I see there from Asim. Have you seen that one, Paulina? I, I had actually, I've been screening this section the whole year, the whole, the whole year session. So um, Asin has been interested in uh, how do you think field service will tr uh, transform during or after the COVID period? Yeah, and that's really an interesting one. Uh, hard to say, but what we've seen over the past 12, 14 months, uh, some of the requirements or questions that we've been uh, we've been asked by our customers and prospects. Uh, they were a lot related to providing kind of like a self-service solution for our customers' customers. So the ability to connect uh, with them in real time, perhaps share the share the screen so that they can see what the customers are doing. One particular company that uh, comes to my mind, uh, they're uh, they're producing those heavy uh, heavy. Uh, machineries that produce different types of, uh, of uh, hardware, such as processors, so silicon, uh, really complicated machines, and they were unable to travel for a number of months. So they really required a solution that would enable them to connect with the factory workers and guide them through some of the processes. So that's what we've seen kind of during the COVID, but also uh, solutions that would help the customers to uh, to get all the information without somebody traveling there. So providing them with either applications or tools uh, that they can use on their own. Other than that, I think it's mostly about uh, really the most of the field service uh, areas and scenarios really require a lot of expertise. Uh, a lot of these companies are in, in businesses that can't really be stopped or put on halt. Uh, so for many of them, it I don't want to say it was business as usual, but it was very close to uh, to their norm, normal operations. Perhaps they required to be even more productive, more nimble to make sure that they can uh, they can go to all the places uh, that that is on their that were on their schedule, uh, uh, be in and out uh, as efficiently and as quickly as possible. Great. Thank you for answering that. And I've seen Elisa the question and you answered it during your <clears throat> uh, session without even, without, um, without knowing what she was asking, but I still think it's uh, worth mentioning that uh, she asked how much of this mobile functionality works if there is no cell or Wi-Fi service. Uh, I think it's very good questions because that's something that is <laughs> that has been very important for Resco all the way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that was a great timing, Liz. Thanks for that <laughs> question. And it's something that uh, that we always highlight when it comes to Resco technology. That's something that we're really proud of and we invested in since the very beginning of when we were putting the uh, the Resco technology together. It, it's really part of the DNA 
of uh, of uh, our tools and our code it's not an afterthought not a feature or, or a functionality that comes in one of the resco's updates it's something uh that uh, that is really the first thing on our mind when we're uh when we're adding new features and new functionality into our solution uh, so for for us and especially for our customers, uh, having offline capabilities is not only a nice to have feature, but it's a must. It helps them to perform uh, their jobs, their tasks, uh, their activities whenever uh, they need to and wherever they are. But not only it helps with the true functional solution, but it also helps a lot with user experience. Many times we're supporting companies that work in really challenging conditions for example one of our customers we also put uh, together a, a success story or case study to highlight what they do it's called mhi vestas they use uh the, what they actually do they manufacture and produce the wind turbines and they install them uh offshore so in in the north sea for example in europe and they use Resco when they go out uh, uh, onto the sea and uh, man maintain and, and uh, inspect these wind turbines. So they can't afford to wait five seconds every time uh, they tap on a screen and refresh uh, the screen, move from one screen to another. Uh, for them, it's a pure, uh, pure necessity and a must to have an application that is very responsive, uh, works perfectly fine. And really, uh, they see everything in a matter of uh, a fraction of a second when they tap somewhere uh, on the screen. So that's why we really invest heavily into the offline capabilities and make it part of, uh, of our technology, uh, not, not as an afterthought, as I mentioned, but as a default that you don't have to think about and try to figure what should work offline and how it should be working offline. We're just making sure that it's always available there. Yeah, I, I'm just reading Liz's response. She says she loves it and it happens to her all the time. I can certainly relate to that. It's just enough to stand on the wrong end of a street where I live and I have no service at all. So I know what you mean, Liz. <laughs> and I was wondering, <clears throat> while we wait maybe for more questions from the audience, uh, could you please tell us a little bit more about uh, what backend systems does Resco integrate with? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And uh, for those of uh, you who are uh, attending this session and maybe know Resco, we're primarily coming from that what used to be called the dynamic CRM uh, background, supporting the dynamic CRM now renamed to 365, uh, Dynamics 365 uh, customer engagement. So the different types of, uh, of applications that are under this umbrella. Uh, but we're constantly working on uh, on uh, expanding the the supported backends as we see more and more customers coming to us looking for those robust mobile experiences uh, so naturally we uh, nicely integrate with my microsoft dynamics 365 field service microsoft is even using resco technology for uh, for all of their field service customers but we have a lot of customers uh, using dynamics 365 sales uh, customer service and that's not where we're stopping. We're, we're going forward actually uh, at the end of this month, March 2021. We're releasing a new version uh, of Resco technology that is officially bringing uh, integration with Microsoft Dynamics 365 Business Central. And we also nicely and natively integrate with Microsoft Dataverse. So uh, if there are companies who want to uh, create uh, these uh, rich mobile experiences uh, built on top of Resco technology. We have a lot more options right now. And I think what people might really be interested in is how does pricing work? Do you think we can cover that as well? Uh, yeah, that's a good point. Uh, so I, I want uh, uh, deny Resco comes uh, at an extra price, uh, but uh, we are a typical ISV uh, in the Microsoft world. So we're putting a lot of energy and effort into building uh, these products and solutions for customers. So they come with a price tag. Uh, and we're actually very uh, transparent there. Uh, so we have our full pricing listed on our website, resco.net. Uh, and they come in uh, three different tiers. Uh, 
professional uh, enterprise and ultimate and, and it starts at $25 per user per month so we license actually per mobile user that means every uh, mobile user requires a license uh, and depending on how robust how complex the final version of the mobile solution is it can go up to the ultimate license uh, which is priced at $40 per user per month thank you so much for answering that um, looks like we don't have any more questions from the audience um, do, do would you maybe like to add something or do you have something on your mind you would like to share with us? Uh, I would just really like to thank you all the attendees uh, uh, and also the organizers. I think they put a great uh, uh, great effort into this. A lot of time and energy uh, went into organizing this event. Uh, we're very uh, happy to be able to, to be one of the sponsors of the Dynamics Con. Uh, and we wish everybody a, a, a great experience. We have two more days to go, which is awesome. Uh, everybody have a, have a great, uh, great day. And uh, we'll see you at one of the next sessions. For those of you who have additional questions, uh, Resco, as I mentioned, is one of the sponsors. So we have a booth. If you're interested in finding more about Resco technologies, we have a couple of case studies there and videos as well. Uh, and we're able to uh, are available uh, in the uh, in the booth area to chat with any of you if you have additional questions. Yeah, we have a whole team of our colleagues over there, so we would really love if you could stop by, and we would love to chat. And we, I would really like to say that we appreciate your time um, that you watched our session today, uh, and I really hope we can see each other soon and maybe finally in person. Sounds great. Thank you, everyone. And thank you, Paulina. Thank you, Ivan.